Good morning, good afternoon, and welcome back to Watching Chickies. Now here on day 85 of our broadcast. And Watching Chickies is the daily live stream here on Reddit in which we watch the lives and development of these three young chickens. Right here in brown and gold, we have our onigadori named Kagome. And Kagome's breed is from Japan and is an endangered breed that is known for its luxurious long tails that never molt. They could end up being about 20 feet or around 6 meters in length. Right there in gray is our little silky chicken named Stormy. Hello there, little Stormy. And uh, the silky breed comes originally from China. They were our first bred about 2,000 years ago. And they are covered with this glorious sort of fuzz their whole lives. They don't make proper feathers. Um, and they sort of retain this fuzzy look all the while. They're very warm, um, caring little chickens and kind of perfect for any, you know, um, person that's interested in starting to get into keeping chickens. And then right here, we have our Ayam Samani chicken named Braveheart. And Braveheart is quite a gentle little chicken who does enjoy pets from dad and the Ayam Samani breed originally comes from Southeast Asia. And, you know, she is just a very lovely hen. She's the biggest of our flock. And she is quite a joy to watch. And on this program, we just kind of watch the chickens go about their day. It can be quite relaxing just watching some little chickens live their best life. And we have been streaming them each and every day of their lives. So this is day 85. And we just kind of comment on the chickens as they go about. And I do enjoy answering questions from you guys and just having a little bit of a chat. It could almost be a little bit of a meditative experience. Just watching these chickens be themselves and just go about as one happy little flock there. These chickens have been raised side by side each and every day. We make sure to pick them up, give them lots of pets, and today as a treat I have prepared some raspberries for them. And today will be the first day that they have had raspberries. They have had strawberries in the past, they have had blueberries, and a few other treats, but today is their first raspberry day. So we'll see if they enjoy that little treat there. Oh my there, Stormy. Just pecking right there at the cubbies. Asserting himself, raising his head up very high today. And hello there, little Braveheart, and hello there, Banalis. Always lovely to see you on the stream. Tiny little peep there from Stormy as he tries to go next to Kagome. Who's decided, you know what? Now is a good time for a little bit of a wander and a little bit more independence. Oh, but here comes Stormy, hot on her heels. I think at times that, you know, Stormy almost regards Kagome as his little girlfriend now, just kind of following her about. And Banalis, well, I am doing brilliantly today, and the chickies seem to be doing well, too. I had a good amount of sleep last night after our evening stream, which was pretty good because I only had about three hours of sleep the night before I worked. It was quite the experience being on a film set again yesterday, everybody wearing masks, having to worry about all of the social distancing and testing. 
all of the uh, craft services have changed. So it was quite an eye-opener right there. And uh, just Shushi, um, I have um, read things um, from other chicken owners about um, potty training chickens. And it is possible, it's just a pretty timely endeavor to manage. I haven't managed for these guys because, well, we're planning on, well, they already live most of the time outside, so I think it would be hard to maintain, you know, when they go inside and outside. But it's all about repetition, um, recognizing when your little chicken is about to poop, and then you find some place like you have like a sand bin ready, and then you plop down the chicken. They uh, make their little poop, and then you give them a little food reward. And you have to be prepared to do that for at least a few days in a row. What is it, Kagome? What is it? You're tapping daddy's leg there. Oh my, oh my. Hello there, Michael Green 25 and a uh, Storm Shadow um, Wixie um, right here. Um, in brown and gold, we have Kagome, our Onigadori chicken. Right here in brown, we have Braveheart, our Ayam Samani chicken. And right here in gray, just kind of peeping softly, is our little silky chicken named Stormy. There we go, there we go, guys. And um, one of the things that we do on this stream every day is we weigh the little chickens. Now, weighing your chickens while they're still growing, um, ours are 85 days old. Um, they should be pretty much at their full size once they are six months old. Um, so, um, just keeping track of their weight is a good way of seeing that they're still growing, that they're not getting sick, or they're not injured. Oh, hello, Braveheart. Yes, I know Daddy is here. He'll, he's going to pick you up in a minute, but we're going to do your weigh-in first. Yeah. It's going to be weigh-in time. So you know what? I'm going to grab our little Silky here first. He's our little rooster. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. And we're going to start our weigh-in with him. So let me put our camera down here. Because for the other chickens, you know, I kind of have to rely on using both hands these days they're all quite a bit bigger so i'm not i don't think we'll see a dramatic increase today mostly because i weighed them so late last night so that's 500 and 15. so stormy is down by 10 grams but i kind of expected that um, because Stormy had gone up. Oh, Stormy already started to eat the um, raspberries there. I put them too close. And he's already kind of munching on them. Oh dear, oh dear. So I weighed them almost um, like 10 hours later than I usually do yesterday. And as a result, um, the weight got a little bit off skew. But as you can see on the regular schedule there, it went from 500 to, to 525 to 515, so that should still be within the margin right there. Oh dear, Stormy, you're going to be eating all of the raspberries if I leave you there. Oh dear, oh dear. And super sassy, Cat Lassie, thank you for the all-seeing upvote. And let's get some of the other chickens here. It's not just Stormy's raspberries. No, you get more raspberries in a bit. Oh dear, oh dear. All right, who is up next? Now I'm sure all of your weights are probably gonna be going down a bit because of the odd time that I weighed you yesterday. I really should have asked Lauren to do it before she went to work. There we go, there we go. I know you like to protest. There you go, there you go, my sweet girl. So you are 6.35, so that's 7 down, so yes, that is following 
the sort of odd time that I weighed you last night. <laughs> but you are still way up from where you were two days ago. There you go. There you go. Lovely. There, there, there. Ha <laughs> And I got Braveheart right away. There we go. There we go, Braveheart. And that was 7.55, and that's just seven down from before. And Braveheart, well, she jumped herself back in there. Oh my, oh my. And no, um, the weight loss for today is just kind of an illusion. Um, yesterday when I weighed them, it was about 10 hours. Um, beyond the regular time which I weigh them in. So it's pretty common for there to be a bit of a weight difference. We're back onto the regular weight schedule and all of them are still um, quite a bit heavier than when they were two days ago. So yesterday I weighed them, it was like nine o'clock at night, 9 p.m. And as you can see, we're weighing them more around noon today. So that was just my kind of mistake yesterday because I was working. And I think Stormy would probably want more of these raspberries. Ooh, Kagome just took a big piece. Stormy, it's raspberries. Lovely raspberry. Ooh, Kagome liked that. And there goes our Braveheart. <gasps> yes. She gobbled that piece right up. Oh my, oh my. And there we go. Ooh, they really do seem to like the raspberries. Yeah? Did you like how Dad just chopped all of those pieces up for you? There you go. And Kagome likes just picking up a few bigger chunks of them there. Oh, and a nice little bite there for our Stormy. I'm just going to sit next to them here and just watch them kind of enjoy this. Oh my, oh my. Well, Kagome is a clear fan of the raspberries there, as we see here, just kind of clean off the side of her beak right there on the blanket. I guess our little Stormy might have had enough before when he was being weighed. Oh, lovely, lovely. Oh, and hello there, one true pineapple. There we go, there we go, guys. Oh, are you done with the raspberries already? I think Braveheart might be due for a cuddle soon. Well, I guess I'll let them eat the rest of them in just a little bit. So we could go on to the chicken's regularly scheduled cuddle there. Oh dear, oh dear. Yeah. Hello there, Kagome. Hello. My fussy girl. Fussy, fussy, fussy. Yes, 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 on Dad's shoulder now. Ooh. And our little Stormy was a bit too fast for me there. Going back and forward, playing keep away from Dad. Now yesterday was the first time that we managed to spot our little Stormy jump all the way to the top of the cubbies by himself. And we caught that on camera, so that was a lovely moment. Oh dear, Braveheart, you just stepped in some wet poo right there. Oh, and right onto Dad. Oh well, oh well, I would have wiped off your foot. Oh dear, well, that's what washing machines are for. Yes, 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 it's okay. I'll just give you a bit of a pat. And I can still hear in my ear our little Kagome still kind of munching on raspberries. Oh, 
Yes, yes, yes. What? Here you are. <laughs> yeah, that's you on the camera. You are a pretty bird. You are. Okay. Do you want to sit? Good girl, mate. Sit. Oh, you know how to sit. Good girl, mate. Come on. Sit. Sit, sit, sit. There you go. Ooh. I felt that sneeze right on my cheek. Oh my, yeah? Oh my. There you go. She's just kind of getting adjusted and I'm sure she's almost ready to just kind of move to my other shoulder. And I kind of like to keep my voice nice and calm during these broadcasts, just to keep the chickens nice and calm. Chickens are very sensitive little birds. They can get riled up very easily. They could get scared. So by keeping my voice nice and calm and level, that's a way for them to have a more lovely time. There you go. And hello, little Stormy. Did you like your raspberries? You had plenty of them when you were getting weighed. And then you let Kagome eat as much as she wanted. Such a little gentleman there for our little fuzzy, silky chicken. Our little rooster. I haven't heard you really crow in two days, though. I guess you really haven't seen the need. Or maybe I just didn't hear you at the time. Yesterday I was working in the city, after all. Right on the studio. Ooh, Gazuntai. Gazuntai, Kagome. Seems little raspberries might make you sneeze a bit. And you're wiping off your beak right after your sneeze right on Dad's shirt. Well, I think that, you know, that's common for any little one. Whether it be just a little kid or, I guess in this case, a little chicken. Oh, lovely little song there, Kagome. And we see her just kind of settle in on my shoulder. She usually likes to cross her little feet when she's sitting down. And she loves kind of identifying these days as sort of a goose with all of that honking. <gasps> Another sneeze. A sneezy sneeze and wiping off your beak on Dad's shirt. It's okay, I'll let you. I let our little Braveheart just step right onto my jeans with her poopy little foot. So, you know, I'll let you wipe off your chicken snot on me. Oh dear, oh dear. And yes, yeah, super sassy cat lassie, my shirts equal Kagome's tissue. And hello there, Memento Mori, and hello there, Parth Sailor. Kagome's just calmed down now. He's given us a little song and a little honk. Oh, lovely song, lovely song from lovely Kagome. Yes, yes. And today they've had their first ever raspberries, which they all really enjoyed. And Parth Sailor, thank you for the sub to our YouTube channel. That is much appreciative, and you know, that really does help us out. Oh, lovely, lovely. And uh, for those of you who might not know, we do have a YouTube channel called Watching Chickies, and there is a link to it on my profile page. And we upload all of these videos and a few other bonus videos there. Oh, well, thank you, Parth Sailor. And it is lovely to have you all here with me, just kind of watching the chickies relax and have a nice time. I even managed to post a couple of pictures the other day that Lauren took of me with all of the chickens just kind of on top of me to a chicken sub yesterday, just so you guys can see what it looks like when I am filming these bits. Uh, Kagome was on my shoulder, and then the other two birds were on either leg. Oh, yes. And I'm very happy that our Braveheart can get so just peaceful 
being um, with me here and just enjoying a few strokes because she is just so patient at times when I'm giving the other birds attention. Oh, are you about to sneeze again? Are you about to see a Braveheart sneeze? Your mouth is open. That's unusual. Yeah? Oh, are you still chewing on little seed bits from the raspberries? Well, that's interesting. Is a little berry still stuck to the roof, the roof of your mouth there? Oh my. And Stormy, your hairstyle is just growing wilder and wilder each and every day. My little rock star. Even have a little beard pretty much growing here. There you go, there you go. Handsome little chicken. You're gonna get all of the little ladies of the flock. Oh, and I feel now Kagome was wiping her beak off on my hat as well. So all of that is now Kagome's tissue. I know, I know. Messy Kagome. Messy, messy, messy. Oh, and Parth Sailor says um, that you tried, that you've tried to pet a chicken at your uncle's home, and they get afraid when you get close to them. Um, so how to win their trust? So, um, you know, it could be a lot more difficult with a chicken that hasn't been hand raised by a human. Um, all of our chickens for this broadcast, you know, they've been picked up, they've been petted every day by us. So as a result, they are very people friendly. But um, if you have a chicken that's just been a working animal their whole life, and they just really spend um, their time with other chickens, they can be a lot more standoffish to people. You have to almost think of them more like wild birds, you know? Um, they can watch you from a distance, but if you get close to them, um, they can get a lot more wary. Um, one way to possibly gain their trust a little bit is to be one of the ones that is feeding them, um, offering them um, handfuls of corn um, bit by bit, you know, getting a little bit closer each time. Um, and then eventually you might see them start to come up to you, start to warm up to you. And then at this point, you could then try giving them just like a little gentle stroke here on sort of the chest area and see how they react to that. Maybe just a very gentle pat here to the top of their heads. Try for these fully grown chickens to avoid the back because they're not really used to you. You know, they're not really used to people. So just little tiny strokes after giving them some food, giving them a few days to get used to you and they start to approach you, that might be a good way to start to be little friends with them. So that's my advice to you, Parth Sailor. Um, you know, the best way to have a friendly little chicken is just to be, you know, kind of in their lives from day one. If they are raised to be friendly, if they are raised and they are being pet, you know, they'll be used to you, they'll be used to people, and they won't see you as a threat. I think I unintentionally rhymed that. Oh my. Oh, happy bird. Happy little brave heart there. There you go. There you go. And it's lovely just to see a happy little chicken going about her day here with the rest of the flock. And even our little Stormy here was kind of falling asleep there for a moment. He's really just a big fuzzball right now. But he's been keeping such good care lately of his feathers. I've seen him preening a lot more. And as a result, his feathers have become even softer lately. They are so clean. I think you've been taking a few more sand baths lately as well. Oh dear, oh dear. 
And well, Manatee Maestro, I will give him a few pets in your honor there. And uh, Parth Sailor, well, they haven't seen too many new people at this point. Um, they've seen um, a couple of family members and a couple of friends. But when they've seen new people, um, they haven't really been afraid. I've managed to, um, you know, pick up the chickens, put them in uh, to the hands or the shoulder of new people, and, you know, they're pretty happy. Generally speaking, these are pretty friendly little chickens. Um, and because of the way that we've raised them, you know, they don't really view people with suspicion. There we go, there we go. You know, if times were different, they probably would make very good little animal ambassadors for going to schools and introducing chickens to children. Oh, there we go, there we go. Oh, and Lola loves lemons. That you used to be scared of chickens, but my feed has totally won you over. Oh, well. Now, chickens aren't really anything to be afraid of. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you are much bigger than any chicken is. You know, any chicken that's really having any sort of aggressive behavior towards you is usually just doing it out of an, just an instinct of fear. You know, when a chicken hasn't been raised with a human in their life, they view you as just like this big, scary monster that might want to eat them. So sometimes they might puff up their feathers, they might kind of yell at you to go away. But, you know, they're just doing that because they don't know who or what you are. They don't know that you're there to just kind of pet them, to give them a little bit of love. They're just acting out of instinct. Oh, an apple juice hater, thank you for the wholesome pro award. And, um, Parth Sailor, um, so what chickens do to, um, stay clean is they do a sort of combination of dust or, um, sand baths, and they, um, preen their feathers. So one of the most common behaviors you might even see here is the little chickens just kind of inspecting each and every one of their feathers with their beaks, kind of just kind of biting them a bit, putting the beak down through it, and then they puff up these feathers here in the back where they have some natural sort of um, glands here where they spread natural oils across their feathers. And um, they can find any sort of damaged feathers, um, pull them out. Um, and, you know, feathers naturally molt as well. Oh, and uh, Sentinel AC, thank you for the Bless Up Award. So, I mean, chickens are, generally speaking, pretty cleanly animals. Um, some people might get the wrong idea for the ones that live um, outside. When they see them, you know, go into the dirt and um, give themselves dust baths. But, you know, that's a way for them to try to ensure that they don't really have any mites. Oh, and um, Parth Sailor, thank you for the I'd Like to Thank Award, and Good Guy Me, 008, thank you for the I'd Like to Thank Award. Much appreciated. And um, yeah, they might give themselves um, dust baths and everything, but then, you know, they spend a lot of their time preening uh, to really make themselves look nice and presentable, as we can see. Our little Kagome here is quite meticulous with her feathers. They all look nice and lovely. And she's giving us a few little songs there. Yeah, my little brown-eyed chicken. And we can see as she preens, she can actually release a little bit of, um, sort of like chicken dander right there. It's just kind of like dandruff. Um... As their feathers molt, as new ones come in, that can cause some uh, dead and dried skin. So preening is another way of just getting rid of that stuff. And Kagome has lovely little dinosaur feet there. 
that she uses for Dad's special perch there, his shoulder. And to Kagome, well, my shoulder is her exclusive domain. She does not like it when she sees another chicken hanging out there. Oh, and Parth Sailor, no worries about asking questions. That is half the reason for these streams. And the other half is just kind of relaxing together, watching these lovely animals just have a nice day. You know, it's never wrong to um, pursue uh, more knowledge and to ask questions. You know, it's part of the human experience, learning more things. And by asking questions, you help expand your own mind. Oh, hello there, Braveheart. Hello. She wanted to adjust a bit and use Dad's jeans as basically her little napkin as well. And, um, hello there, Bot who asks in Spanish if I am having a good day, and I am. Está muy bien. I do know a few phrases. Oh, dear. Well, Kagome, I think you pooed on me. Did you poo? Let me see. Oh, yes, you did. Well, we... There we go. Dad can just pull that off. When you have little chickens with you, you inevitably are going to have to deal with a little bit of poop. Oh my, oh my. And um, one true pineapple. Um, Both Braveheart and Kagome are starting to become a little bit more comfortable outside. You know, they're still really complaining to myself and Lauren whenever we're bringing them in and out. But I think they're getting more used to it. I'm seeing them go around on the grass a bit more, spending less time inside the coop when they're outside, which is a good sign. They enjoy the bugs and stuff, but you know, oh what? Stormy, you can't eat the camera. You can't eat the camera. Right, Braveheart? Stormy can't eat the camera. Ooh, what a lovely head-on image there. Yeah, what a lovely little comb you have there. Ooh. And that was a big poop there from our little Stormy, but he managed to avoid getting Dad's jeans there. So thank you, thank you. Oh, Stormy. Well, thank you for aiming that right past me. That was very considerate of you, my little rooster. And um, when I spell Stormy, I usually do it with a Y, not an I. There we go. There we go. And Kagome is deep into her preening for today. You might hear a few noises that sound as if um, you know, she's just kind of crumpling up paper. Hello there, Braveheart. Hello. There we go. Lovely rose gold feathers. And she is quite proud of her appearance there. Oh, and Bob Hamburger, you're chilling out with your chickens. I hope they are doing fantastic today. I think a Braveheart has gone back for a few more raspberries there. While she has the chance. It's nice to see her enjoy it. Oh yes, I hear her little beak. Just kind of chomping on them. Oh, and I'm hearing some little noises of complaint from Kagome. Oh, no, now you're sitting down. <gasps> Crossing your little feet there like a little lady. Um, muscle ups, uh, these chickens are members of our family and friends for life, so they will never be eaten. And Parth Sailor, um, so chickens can feel more comfortable in a certain temperature band. Um, speaking in terms of Fahrenheit, 
when you first get a little um, baby chicken for the first week, I would probably recommend them be around um, 95 degrees Fahrenheit for temperature. And then each week after